Hey guys, welcome to the Chains Out Podcast. Uh, I'm Brett Ernst with my boy Carlos Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Uh, we got some uh, special guests in here. Uh, go ahead, introduce yourself. Start with Jamal. What's up? I'm Jamal Coleman. Everybody, let's have some fun. I think this is your camera right here. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> let's have some fun. Jamal Coleman. Uh, Xavier, introduce yourself. Xavier Cardona, happy to be here. Thank yeah, you for see, having he me. found the camera. Yeah. Right there. Hey. It was like one of those newscasters that go to the wrong one. Yeah. Oh, today. Hey, set him up. Let him do the mistakes first. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, um, now Jamal works with me a lot at the at the Strat. Um, Carlos does too, but he graduated. He don't want to work with me anymore. Fuck <laughs> no. Now now he's big time uh, all over the place. But uh, yeah, interesting two weeks in comedy. I mean, you know, you had uh, the uh, Cat Williams interview, which was fucking amazing. Uh, you know, yeah. epic. Did you watch? Did any of you guys watch the whole thing? Oh yeah, I yeah, the oh, whole. Yeah. I didn't watch it. Yeah, you know, I, no, I, I don't. I, you don't even watch specials. You don't even give a fuck. You're oh, like, you, I can't. God. Well, I, I, uh, I was, I was, I didn't think I was gonna watch the whole thing, but I just, it was like, oh shit, this fool is not stopping. This is, this is great. He also throws out a shout out to Sacramento, so I had to, you know, represent <laughs> nine one sickness. What, what did he say about the sack? He's at Sacramento, where he learned how to do like a lot of the stand up because it's like 50-50. It's it, which is right. true. Sacramento is super diverse, and that's why, like, when I started there too, same thing. It's like you can't just do, you know. That's another thing too. It's a it's a it's it's a tourist trap where we're at. So right. it's like you got a lot of these hotels coming in. So I couldn't do local references. I had to hurry up and learn how to like do general shit or your own sh like Wait, personal Sa stuff. Wait, Sacramento's a tourist city? Yeah, city? like the old Sacramento and old and that's uh, a cool downtown. Man. That, <laughs> it, 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 you ever been down there? Sac like once. It's like uh, it's like an old west. Uh, it yeah. looks like one of those um, you know, those like ghost Tombstone. towns. Yeah, because <laughs> they got the wooden planks and you know the old wooden buildings and. Uh, and then Tower uh, is is born there. That's where Tower Records comes from. Oh, yeah. So okay. it's the Tower Bridge is next to it. Tower Records are very first ones. Then it's like it's got a lot of history. I didn't know that. Like so yeah. where where why do they call it Tower? Because uh, well the dude uh, I the place that they had it at was Tower Cafe. Was there no no the first one was. A little bit further down, then they had a second one at Tower. Well, my Tower question Theater. is: Is the bridge named after Tower, Tower. Records, or mm -hmm. is the yeah. Tower? Took it's the all named after Tower Records. Oh, that's great. And the dude, uh, you know who else? Uh, Tom Hanks's son, Colin Hanks, uh, uh, did a documentary because he's from Sacramento. The white rapper kid? No, no, that's Chet. <laughs> <laughs> but he made a documentary, and it's called Tower Records. It's about how the, the rise and fall of Tower Records and shit like that. Dude, well, cool. I mean, you're too young to remember that, really. But Tower Records was like. Dude. I still yeah, remember. I, I used to stand in front of Tower Records and get people's email addresses and sell them like mixtapes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's hella funny. I haven't heard mixtape in a long Tower time. Records. Like, and Sammy Goods and uh, Sam, oh, Sam Goody. Sam, Sam Goody. There we go. You Sammy remember Peaches? Goods. Peaches. <laughs> yeah, she was bad as fuck. That might have been an East Coast chain. Yeah, and, no, that uh, was an East Coast. But chain. they would sell like these little crates, like these little fake wooden crates that you could put your tapes in. Oh yeah. Oh shit. I remember those? Yeah. The um oh. yeah you uh the one on Sunset was really was really popular too the Tower Records yeah that yeah. was a famous one yeah. I, I was there that's I, when you used to be in front oh, of yeah. yeah I went there just to just to go there when I first moved out there because you know it was so famous mm -hmm. I remember when Virgin first came out came to play and you could listen to shit oh, yeah. remember that you could, uh, inside, yeah that was amazing <laughs> Amoeba <laughs> Records was popping for a while at Sunset too and that shut down Amoeba yeah you yeah. know it's funny too they'll keep like every once in a while like I think there's like two blockbusters left. One in Alaska and, and one, one in, in Oregon. Portland and like Oregon, yeah. yeah, yeah. I actually stumbled upon it. Yeah, I even been. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then uh, they did the same with the Amoeba Records, you know, just to give you that old school feel. Right. But, mm. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I remember eight tracks all the way up to cassettes to CDs, <laughs> and this is the best it's ever been for music. That's why when you know even even the vinyl, but like you know when those hipster people have these record shops, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, let's keep it authentic. Fuck that, <laughs> dude. I got playlists of thousands of of thousands of songs, which that's gonna be that, that's what I wanted to do with us what? is talk about playlists. Like, what's your playlist? Mm. You know what I mean? And um. But now it's fucking beautiful, you know. I don't. I don't. I'm not trying to be nostalgic. Mm. You know? <laughs> the only the only thing I don't like about that you don't buy uh, hard cop. There's two things. One is that it's just from what we found out, like it's licensing, so it's like they can right. change it on you. Right. Like right. Kanye Kanye's oh. album, The uh, Pop Life of Pablo, has changed yeah. like four or five times yeah. since I've got it. Done, so yeah. it's a living yeah. document. Yeah, yeah, it's a living. Do yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And then the other thing too is like I used to like to. Wait, have what does that mean? I uh, mean, that like it won't be the he same album. Nah, new like, songs, be remix the, the songs, songs and then change it. take it off and then update it. Is that good or bad? To me, it's bad. It could be both. 
Because sometimes it, he'll, he'll make the song and then it'll be missing somebody or he'll like add somebody in or like add some more production or take it out. Yeah. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. It's all preference. I like the original version. I like the new version. Mm -hmm. It all depends. And then school. you can never find the original version sometimes because he's like, it's. Well, I've, I've had that happen yeah. where oh, like yeah? I'll Download. look up old school songs, but then it's like a, they redid it. Yeah. Because right. they didn't own it. Different. Yeah. Well, it's like them re recording it and then you're like, right. ugh. You're like, where's these violins coming from? This person sounds 40 fuck? years older. <laughs> I'm old school. I want the art. I want the notes. That's the thing, I want, too. I want to see what studio you recorded in, what engineer recorded it, and yeah. what mic you used. I will say that's what was cool about having buying albums back in the day is that the artwork and then the, in the sleeve you would have like the lyrics mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff like that was pretty cool man and right. the uh the other thing too is like when you had your collection you would uh display it you know and then like if someone came over like oh shit you're into that too and it's like also a right. conversation starter it's like da 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 but now like you said it's hidden on your phone you can't see it but I agree though too. The playlist it is fun because it's like you it's, you, you don't need it, you're not limited to twenty on an album no, or right. or, a, or a tape where you're li limited to like ten songs. I've I've spent a lot of time, more time than I need. <laughs> I imagine you have to because you're dude. Manic. I got these are my uh, these are my lists that I got. Uh oh. Um, Ernst is manic. Have you ever, you ever, if he's DJ, be careful. But oh, think yeah. about what that would be on vinyls. That'd be a full time job changing oh, out that yeah, many it'd be vinyls. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I mean. It'd be yeah. awful. I meant, look, there's You'd there's be sweating. That's what DJs do. <laughs> that's what DJs do. That's what do, that do. I know. So but I I'm got, not trying to do that at the house. <laughs> for, for I got <laughs> obviously I got a hip hop playlist, slow jams playlist. Mm -hmm. uh, oh shit. I got a 2000s playlist. Uh, I got a club playlist, freestyle playlist. Ooh, I, I want to hear that. the club one. Uh -oh. I'm no, not the freestyle you think. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Guido music. Oh man! I well, they it was called beast. it Latin freestyle. Um, that, and then I got a disco playlist. Then I got like a chill playlist, which is like Sade and okay. And uh, yeah, who's on this one? Got Ritual, cool. Damien Rice, which you put me on to. Yeah, Damien Rice is great. Uh. You know, I think this is great. I got like 70 songs each playlist. <laughs> you got vibes over there. What do you use, mm -hmm. Apple Music or Spotify? Uh, Spotify. Oh, yeah, I got, I'm Apple. I'm Apple. Yeah, I'm, I'm Apple. Team Apple. So yeah. let's uh, pull up a playlist. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Like when you go to the gym, uh, dude. If if somebody ever checked me at the gym, they'd be like, "What the <laughs> fuck?" I just got listening? one playlist, and it's just all the Outkast's music. Oh shit, that'll work. I mean, That's all you got. That's it. <laughs> Everything else I put on random for all moods. I'll just put it on random. I'll just be like current mood or whatever. But for the mood. gym, for the whatever. Southcast. <laughs> okay. Dude, I got, yeah. Because then I have my like songs, which again, I'm all over the place because it's like my pictures. I got a, I got a playlist called Bitch You Don't Know. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and, go, uh, it's, and it's got like uh, SWV. <laughs> I'm so into you. Fucking Ooh. high five. Ooh. Uh, uh, wait, uh, let me guess. Uh, is what? it uh, it's all kissing game? <laughs> yeah, kissing. It's got a kissing game. Uh, I like the way. Oh yeah, that's a, that's the same I like thing. The way you you kiss, kiss me when we're playing <laughs> the kissing game. Dude, I got this workout list. I was trying to make it. We've been together, <laughs> and I never well, felt. I got this uh, when I work out. I got this playlist. It's it's called it's hit it hard, and it's just Carlos's mom. <laughs> 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 just recordings of her calling me a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. She said, hey, "One more, bitch ass. Oh, but push it." <laughs> <laughs> she's you can hear her smoking a cigarette <laughs> I fucking i only you, play hip hop she's got the the little wayne ad libs on it. accident or the lighter the, the which one uh, like little wayne all his songs he has oh, like yeah. the lighter the little lighter flick <laughs> his mom has it hey fucking little wayne ad lib is little, little wayne. wayne stole that from my mom <laughs> she's the og <laughs> see i uh, like uh, cuz there's so many uh songs hip hop songs that nobody knows about anymore like no. like the uh, steady b remix of serious with krs1 is fucking great Ooh. i love um Cuts. uh time uh time's up by oc you know that song oh, oh wait the original gun clapper no i'm thinking ogc no oc uh i gotta find it now <laughs> you lack the wait how's it go boom 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 you lack the minerals and vitamins nice and fuck who i offend rappers sit back i'm about to be that's where uh they big l sampled that oh mm. But you know, man. About. Brett Ernst that, was a battle rapper. In that is a dope that. ass freestyle. <laughs> <laughs> that that uh, Never Big L freestyle. Oh come on, man. that shit's ridiculous. He's one of the best ever to do it. Yeah. Who cares? Big Big L. Big L. L. Is one is Big definitely L. one of the best freestyle rappers. He's like the Tony Hawk of freestyle rapping. Mm. Dude, I remember when he because I was in New York when when Big L started blowing up, and I was like, God, man, you you'd hear him everywhere. 
like he's been dead for 30 years. Well, he he's got still, killed man. over his brother's beef or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they killed him because of his brother, which is awful. And then, yeah, yeah. Then they killed him in the same spot where his brother got killed, right? Or was it vice versa? It was like on the same exact block on the spot right. that he got killed, the same spot. Dude, that's that's crazy. Because his brother was in jail or something like that. Some shit like I don't that. I don't remember, but yeah. either way, it's sad because that dude was was fucking dope. All I really listen to is L.A. music. Born and raised, and it's he said tres delinquents and shit. He's like bah, nah, 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 nah. Well, a little more. <laughs> that, that might be before my time. That's just slap. You, remember, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about, right? Dress the link was uh, fucking ah oh, fuck dude now no, we gotta I'm pull it up. Like, uh, I mean, mine is more like. <laughs> Does it have an accordion in it? It's YG, fucking dope. Blast, Kalen. Oh, you talking about LA, Dom, LA? Dom Kennedy, a lot. Yeah, just a lot of LA music, but like Nipsey Hustle. Oh okay. Uh, oh yeah. Some but, I mean, all I do is LA Summer Jam vibes. That's my playlist. I play that all the time. <laughs> It's just a bunch of West Coast stuff. I don't know. It's different. Well, People... you should venture out. You know, I there's, mean, there's I other coasts. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, dude, that's the most played, though. You Was... never heard this shit? This shit's. That's hard. I remember this. Th yeah, this shit slaps. Well, that's, that's some uh, Ori Lighter shit of Brown. You fuck with those ones? Ooh. Proper dose? I used, to, I used to do work oh, with LBA. It's hella. getting pretty Mexican <laughs> in here, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, not Mexican. <laughs> I'm not Mexican. Don't let the Brown confuse no. you. Oh, you're not? What, what, what's your, what's your, I'm this Colombian. Is, oh, Colombian? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's <laughs> that's got to be because that's more where I where I lived in Miami. You know, oh, yeah. you had a shit ton of Colombians. Colombians, New York, Queens, Colombians. Yeah, but yeah. you don't have a lot on the West Coast. No, no, no barely. Mm -mm. Uh, I, you know what rare. else was, is missing on the West Coast? Not a lot of Jamaicans, man. Nah. Like dance hall music was is big on the East Coast. You Afrobeat, know? dance hall. Yeah, it's well, like all the ranks, yeah. Cuddy, Shaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Caribbean. <laughs> there's a whole rank. There's a whole ranks of ranks. <laughs> In San Diego, they have a little bit, but LA, nah. Yeah. Dude, wait, he took us to a spot when I was in Austin, man. A food truck. That was oh, your boy. Uh, Venezuelan food, which is oh. you know we're neighbors. Colombia mm -hmm. and Venezuela is very close. Is that the so. place you took me to? Cause you was like, oh, Brett's gonna fuck me oh, up. You, take, you don't take, take me oh, to the got, Venezuelan. Oh, the, <laughs> no, but we went to a Venezuelan restaurant. I took Brett to oh, okay. a Venezuelan food truck. Food truck. Shout out for brothers, mm -hmm. fire, dude, great. Me and Ian, uh, Ian Edwards, and him, man, yeah. we went there to do. But you know, it was a line. But this, you know, he pulled up, said some shit in Spanish. <laughs> they, they dapped up. Then he came to the side, and this dude was bringing us food from the side. <laughs> and he's like, don't worry about it. But then, you know, of course, I did the right thing. <laughs> we we ate like kings, man. You gave that him was like strong. a brick. Yo, yeah. we went and got some Venezuelan food. And it was super. Super fire, but in the middle of our meal, <laughs> That's somebody not took you. By the way, somebody That's came clarifying. and put like one of them. Don't eat at this fucking spot in the window. Oh, like they, they like meal. condemned the place. For what? For the uh, like a health inspector, like, oh, yeah, shit. police. Is... They was like, yeah, can we talk to you? And they pulled no, the dude I to would the side. That means that's a great they spot. Play. Yeah, that means, <laughs> that means that food's far. We had just finished. He was like wiping this, like, mm, mm. oh, <laughs> that wouldn't have bothered me in the least. <laughs> it was delicious because you know you get. A, I remember they would come to to our restaurant when uh, I worked at the Cheesecake Fat. You could get a, a a bad grade by leaving the ice chest open, or right. you know they some they bull, you know yeah. they do some bullshit because you know they strong arm you. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think, think it was yeah. the guy was dumping the grease in the creek. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. That means it's a great restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> you expect them to pay for them to pick up the grease? No, he's gonna dump it out he's back. He's that. Venezuela <laughs> until you catch me. <laughs> and they caught him. Yeah, <laughs> the sign's still there, so he's still dumping. Clearly, it was fire though, dude. But uh, so yeah, getting back to this week in comedy. I mean, and, oh, yeah. and then uh, Joe sure. Coy caught some heat. I, oh. I, you know what? Listen, first of all, <laughs> Joe Joe's a great friend. Uh, he's a great dude. Um, I guess he got who was originally supposed to host because they said they hired him ten days before. He was right? a replacement. I don't know if he was a replacement I, I or that was when they did they the contract. Anybody. I have no idea. All I didn't even know that he was hosting. I didn't even know the Golden Globes was on anymore. And then, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was watching the game and then I, you know, because the sound was off and I'm like, yo, is that? Is mm -hmm. that Joe? And then, then they, you know, then it said Golden Globes, and I was like, oh, you know, good for him. Yeah. Right. And then the next day, I'm I'm reading it online, and it, people are like, he, but it's like he didn't write it. They're like, he bombed. And well, all so shit. here's the thing, man. I watched the monologue, and you know, I watch. I didn't know the Golden Globes was going on either, but I follow a lot of comedians, and everybody that a lot of Filipino comedians are like, Joe is hosting. This is big for us representation, you know, which is awesome. I watched the monologue, and it's not bad. It's just some of the jokes didn't land. What is bad, though, is he was going, this one didn't land because I didn't write this one. This is the writers. And it, so it's and just a callback joke, huh? Just like It a, was like, like that. Yeah, yeah. See, see, you know what, though? But they were really pouncing. They're, people 
we're waiting to hate on Joe. Joe's yeah. successful. Yeah. Like, I don't know Joe Coy. I don't even watch his stand-up. But I know that he's a comedian. I know the thing about comedians is that even people that you work with don't want you to succeed. Right. They're still waiting. There's someone not... Yeah. There's some people that don't like that you hang out with Ernst and are, are, are at the shows in the Strat. Right. And they ain't saying it yet, but they're waiting for you to fuck up and so they can come online and start <laughs> well, talking if, shit. If they're, so if they're the hating you for that, then... I don't think the writers sabotage them. I just think that... They, they need to up their hate. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you could do way better. <laughs> but that's, but that's the problem, though, that, you, that people can right. do it, but, but they're not. Because right. that's just... There's a whole bunch of people that want to be comedians, but then they're, I mean, all they just want to do is be well, in a scene and then... And they're like, why can't I be there? Right. They want they, they want that seat. They want that spot. And it's like, motherfucker, you're not putting in work and you're not that funny. Joe put in the work. He yeah. earned that. He was packing out clubs. He worked his way to the stadiums. And, and this this is a big deal to, to host that. But it's literally the worst case scenario for any comedian. It's a bunch of jaded celebrities that aren't there to laugh. They don't no, want to have dude. a good time. They take themselves way too seriously. Stuffy. Kevin's. Doggy. <laughs> Doggy. Check this out. This is what I feel like. It's like when you're a comedian and you do a wedding. Right. You know you're gonna eat shit, yep. but you're gonna you're gonna charge them about a good five grand to do a wedding because you're a gonna corporate fuck. gig. <laughs> yeah, exactly. a corporate gig. Exactly. That's what he did. He did a corporate gig. Exactly. And you asked you ask me if his writers fucked him. No, you know who fucked him? The Illuminati fucked him. <laughs> that, this was his audition to be humiliated, exactly. and now he's gonna start making his movies and making money. Because so he's other, in now. This is this is his jumping one of the in? rituals that Cat told us about. <laughs> 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 Listen, man, as a as a comic, it, when, once once you build your audience, I mean, like no, like there's no comedians. Watching right. that going, oh, well, Joe's, do it don't matter. Nah. It don't matter. Joe's going to, you know, just make fun of it and, you, and you're good. And you move on. That was uh, a big ass check to bomb, basically. Yeah. No real comedians are watching it, hoping he, he bombs and, and, and is happy for his downfall. But there's a gang of motherfuckers out there that just been waiting. Yeah, but, you right. know, those 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 people exist. Uh, but they, they never, they don't and last. And that's no. why it's online. And that's why there's so much TikTok. That's why we're talking about it. That's right. why it's it's something right now that... He's got eyes on them, but they're negative eyes. The only thing is you could do is just weather the storm and get to the other side, and well, that's when you're Even the best. if you read comments of, on what people were saying, because, again, I didn't watch it. I didn't I, – I was reading some of the stuff, and it's like these people were – they just don't get it, and fuck them. <laughs> it's just – it may be like four – it's a 10-minute monologue. Maybe three or four jokes didn't land. Half of the jokes he wrote and half of the jokes wrote or some other writers wrote for him – and the room has everything to and, do with it. Uh, and you're right. He was a stepping host. He got it 10 days before. 10 yeah. days. Dude. So this isn't your material. You're not practicing no. it. You're not working it out. You got 10 days to get the writer's joke, get your jokes, test it. I, I've, I've been following Joe. I, I go to Joe's shows. I watch I mean, Joe. He's uh -huh. one of my favorites. The Oscars, he was running that sh at the store and everywhere. He didn't and, have time. Oh, yeah. But, he was always at the, Yeah, he was doing but it. But Chris Rock was running through the, the working it out. But again, I mean, Joe's the type of comic where, he, you know, he just let him go. Get, yeah. Put, bring him up. And, you know, uh, again, I've known him for years. He's a great guy. Um, but you're right about the hating, man. And, and, and you, you, you know, you, not that you feel it. That's why right. I really disassociate a lot because, you know, there's so much of that nitpicky shit. And, you know, there's, you know how I know it too is I, I had a certain comedian hit me up because he knew before I did that I had, I had booked this pilot. Right. And uh, I was at the treadmill. This was years ago. And I get a call from this guy. And he's like, hey, congratulations on, on the pilot. I'm like, what pilot? <laughs> and he's like, it's in the trades. And then I'm like, but there are people that are monitoring. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not saying he was hateful, but I don't know what the fuck is in there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're just, uh, you, when you do it long enough, you're just looking at, it's just a gig. Right. <laughs> it's a gig that pays great. Mm -hmm. And and it is true. People are piling on to hate, and it'll go away in a week. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. He's still gonna make his seven figures on a road. Oh yeah, he don't give a fuck. You know, uh, his his audience is gonna be his audience. He's still yeah. gonna sell out stadiums and everything. It's just gonna be the Hollywood people or the you know the the TV shows, the, the talking heads, a couple tweets. It all dies. It got, it but that's away. the thing. Okay, so let me just make let me let me just be a devil's advocate here really quick. So you're saying, yeah, he has his own crowd and he's okay. He doesn't really care, da, 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 da. But as comedians, we all know, we're not just settling for our own audience. We're going for the next step. So this is a type of thing where it could have been the next step where right. it's like, yo, because like, let's be honest, Joe Coy had a movie that came out on Easter Sunday and it didn't do very well. And it was all Filipino cast and it was all that shit. But, it, you know, and the numbers didn't show. Great that he got to do it. Awesome. But he, you want to make the next steps. Right. Yeah, but you can't. The next step would be like you just keep putting your product out there, and if people like it, they like it. I mean, look, there's certain comics 
that have had bad sets on award show, and oh, yeah. it's expected. I don't know? think they should do it at all anymore. I think comics should. Be I like, think we pass, should boycott all of it pass for on. real until they until they call you up and go, "Hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuck that!" Yeah, and I get no. a call, "Hey, we're gonna give you this amount." I'll be like, "Hey, let check. me <laughs> let me buy a tuxedo." <laughs> well, they, they shit on Ricky Gervais, but he did he, fucking well. He did amazing. He does it he almost all the it. time. Yeah. yeah, he does it well. But I well, agree with your point though. Like, it's not gonna hurt. Like, you, it's not gonna hurt you. He's still gonna do his numbers on the road. Yeah, but. If he did really well, do more. Does that add a new audience? It opens it up. Open more doors. I don't think that's where I'm like a monologue at a Golden Globes is going to bring a new audience that you didn't have before. Unless you're doing a million seat theater, right? Where it will because you want to know why it will because Mm. you're looking at older people that have a lot of money to fucking spend or whatever the fuck like you know because this is like. That's network television. Only people that watch network television is Midwest people, pretty much. Right. And and you got that old, older. Trust crowd. me, Midwest people are not watching the Golden Globes. <laughs> Either or, you're still there's It's on network television, so therefore it's on a channel that they only fucking know. So it might they might strangle on it. That that opens you up for a whole different audience, and you become a household name. My mom doesn't know who Joe Coy is. His right. mom don't know who Joe Coy is, and maybe she might because he knows him. But mm. let's just say that. My mom knows who Jerry Seinfeld is, who Kevin Hart is, who is, it's another but door. Those, it's another I, I, and again, I'm respectfully disagreeing with you. Those days mm. are done. Because you're, if they are, then how come my mom knows Kevin Hart, Jerry well, Seinfeld? Well, because, because those are today's day. Because of, of when they popped, right? So you're mm. looking at like the new, the new comics that are coming through, right? Like, like say Matt Reif. Right. right. Or uh, Shane Gillis. Or Andrew Schultz. He's or selling Sh- out. He's doing Madison Square Garden. My mom doesn't know who he is. And, she don't, doing, and Tony Hinchcliffe just, yeah, just right. sold out two arenas with his show. My mom I mean, doesn't know who he is. But it, his next step is what would be the Golden Globes in doing well. Did you see that one comic I seen the other day? Do you know his name? That one guy. Uh, he was on there. He was great. Uh, what you call it? His, Joe Coy. He's but, funny. But does the question, like my mom asking me, like, who, who was the, the Filipino guy on the Golden Globes? Is that enough for my mom to buy a ticket, though? She'll That's start remembering it. And then before yeah. you know it, they all start talking it's, and they might see take- again man uh I, I i've seen it change over the, the years guard, i yeah. think I, I don't know man i don't know i mean i, I get what you're saying because it, it's but to it's, be a household name yeah but like that's the i goal. mean again we kept, I, I can see it for the movie sales and then when he drops a movie then all that but yeah. what, what's going on too is that a lot of these people that watch a lot of these uh comedic actors don't even know their their stand-ups right you know what i mean so when, when you're targeting a stand-up community uh, first of all, he got the job, uh, I'm assuming, because of his reach. Exactly. You know what I mean? So the reach is already there. Right. Um, you know, I didn't see the performance. I'm willing to bet a lot of it had to do with the audience not not laughing 100%. at themselves. I didn't see it. 100%. Um, mm, probably. But you've <laughs> got, because, uh, you know, you got to, first of all, look at the share of of how many people actually watched it. And I'm willing to bet it's under a million. Right. Yeah, the probably less than that because you know a lot of those and it's a whole audience that's not a comedic audience right the people that are watching it aren't a comedic audience 90 percent. therefore you're opening up a door where people don't know but you then you, you gotta say, ask are they fans of comedy it doesn't matter about comedy because we're talking about the next step we're talking about movies we're talking about being recognizable the, the currency now is no longer talent the currency now is is uh is being seen it's attention it's attention it's yeah. recognition I, I just think i, I don't think it's it, it would have helped him or hurt him to be honest well, I, with you. I think him bombing is probably still going to help him it's <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> still going to be a household no bad name now. <laughs> yeah like, oh, remember that done, guy? okay we might not be talking about it no now. if he if he did a decent job right. um I, I don't you know because, because we already knew though but but i'm saying he's already in He's already, already in the circle. He's still going to get movies and TV oh, yeah. shows. But we already know as a comedian, if he did well, they'd be like, of course he's going to do well. Hey, right. can, can you look up the uh, <laughs> how many viewers were watched the Golden Globes? The Just Nielsen, out of curiosity. I know the how Nielsen, many people viewed uh, <laughs> Cat Williams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's over 15, 25 million. Yeah, that's, 25 million? That yeah. was 25 million. That was yesterday. Oh, shit. But that thing is everywhere. Yeah. And then the amount of millions of views that the reaction videos still oh, are yeah. getting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's another All the 25. interviews, yeah. all the clips, everybody's and getting their views. And that's a three hour. 9.4 million people watched, point... watched the Golden, Golden Globes. Globes. And that's worldwide? Yes. Wow. So, <laughs> they that, that talk about a household name. Like, well, I'm if saying you... if, if you're looking at it, it if that's worldwide, yeah. that's 8 billion people. Jesus. Right. In the world. Right. But who's watching fucking, in China, fucking Golden Globes? <laughs> 
know well, what I mean? I'm, You're I'm about saying Golden if Globes <laughs> is what just it's, I mean, it's they're, international. They're, yeah, because people, it's yeah, international yeah. Movies. But I'm yeah. saying nine nine million out, out of eight billion on a network television, which network doesn't get numbers anymore at all, anyways. Because right. you remember when we were young and the award show came, it was entertaining. Everybody watched. Right. The Oscars, not yeah, the Golden the, Globes, though. The Oscars, <laughs> right. yeah. uh, the Emmys, people would watch. It's just kind of, it you know, because the younger time. kids don't give a shit. Yeah, and nobody cares anymore. No, no now the Golden Globes is only in America. Okay, yeah. so that's. 320 million, so you're looking at... There's 320 million in, in America? Yeah, oh, yeah. Undo uh, documented. Yeah. <laughs> documented? 330, something like it's, that. Yeah, it's, it's probably yeah. a little yeah. over that. So if you're looking it's at the like percentage of that, 3%. you're looking at... Yeah, 3%. Boom. And all we want is 1%, right? Right, to, to make, like to us. Make a good, to but make I'm it, saying yeah. Joe Coy's audience is... The people that buy tickets for him is well over 3%. Oh, but yeah. wouldn't you like another fucking 1% or 2%? Yeah, but... I, the question is that I'm sure he would have wanted to kill, but I, I, what I'm saying is I don't think it would still move the needle on his career. I don't think it's going to hurt it. Because he's, get, he's getting him. movies, could he's getting parts. Uh, yeah, That's I mean, all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is it could have helped him. But it, like but I said, I'm saying it didn't him. hurt him. I, I still <laughs> think it's going to help him. Yeah, I do too. No, no, no press is bad press, right? Exactly. Because <laughs> now anybody that was a comedy fan and doesn't know him is Googling him yeah. and finding out his comedy, it's and like, his oh, comedy is great. Yeah, so, yeah. By the way, like, so it might actually help him. Out of those nine million, most of them probably don't even think he bombed. They might have just been like, fuck it, look at these ass. Because people exactly. were like deadpan. one exactly. percent that are the loudest. There was yeah. one particular joke where he did a, a bit about Taylor Swift. Um, um, <laughs> he did a joke about how Taylor's uh, at you know the NFL games are showing more of Taylor Swift than they are the actual game because she's dating someone, one of the football players and they're always cutting her in the mm -hmm. in the booth or whatever and it gets no laughs. Taylor Swift gives him the deadpan face. And but it's great because the way that joke is, I think it's good because he's the joke is. I, joke. I've heard a good Taylor Swift joke with the game. And I don't know who it was, forgive me, but it was like, why don't they get Taylor Swift to sing the national anthem? She's already there. She can't get the gig. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny. Yeah. I don't remember who it was that said it, but I'm like, there's good jokes around it. Yeah, because they were like the the thing was like she she writes show, uh, jokes and our our songs and blasts her ex, right. but now she has a problem being on camera at her new boyfriend's game. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, the, is, the other thing too is that y you're also, I mean, because Ricky Gervais went hard the paint oh, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. didn't like them but the america loved them right mm. you know what i mean um <laughs> but with with this one too i'm sure that the jokes they're writing them in a way where it's not too bad but right. like not you know edgy. it's in that medium area which you know as a comic that's the kiss it's, of death it's lukewarm mm. you gotta go hard or go home hmm it, that, I, I, that's listen, what happened with his Barbie joke. I, went I didn't watch oh, it. I didn't that was the hard one. I'm just glad he work. got the gig, and uh, he's a deserving of all his success. Oh, and that's just not me trying to be political. I I love the kid. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that orange chicken joke he wrote is one of the best jokes ever written. <laughs> it is what it has every aspect of comedy in it. It is a phenomenal mm -hmm. joke. It's one of the best jokes ever written. I love Joe Coy. I model a lot of my humor after Joe Coy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I make fun of my mom a lot you know yeah um I, he was one of the first comedians i watched when i was doing sound at the improv who was just like this is this is the dude he's yeah. gonna be dope yeah so for this uh aspect you know I don't, I don't really think he did that bad but from the writers who helped write him he kind of threw them under the bus and they kind of are talking well, but shit. that's also the same thing you know where it's not intentional like you know if, if he's if he's up <laughs> there and he's the face let him throw people under the right, bus right. that's sometimes i mean look what letterman used to do all the time <laughs> remember like a yeah. joke with bomb and he would just <laughs> throw it he's... and then they always shit on the writing staff i mean right. that's just fun it's joe's fun. from here too joe's from vegas right yeah he's born yeah yeah. Oh, yeah 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 but what you call it but everything everything I've heard about him. He's a great dude, and like what yeah. you call it. And I've seen it's funny. And he, what he did it on his own too to get his Netflix special, right? Like, cause he self produced yeah. it. Yeah, I think he self produced yes. it, and then fucking. But your sold point out. is, if if he if he, it's a win win for him. That's, that's yeah, the it's thing, a win win. Right? If he killed, it's still a win. And he's right. You might yeah. pick up some new fans, but then mm -hmm. you know, also too, coming from my school of comedy and the guys that I'm around, which are, a lot of them are starting to blow up now. Uh, we're at that point where we just uh, nobody cares like there's certain people that you don't want to like your shit <laughs> right or wrong right. Like, you don't want them they're gonna come to the show and ruin the vibe yeah it, exactly. it would be like you know do you even want them there if you have a food truck and you have this amazing dish and then somebody comes up to you and goes you know what it was okay, but I'm mm -hmm. not a big fan of onions. You're like, then don't <laughs> fucking eat here. There's a line around the block right. you know mm -hmm. go 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 find a place that makes this without onions. You know, and and I, I think too that 
uh, what getting back to your other point about haters, they, yeah. there are, man. There are, and I've seen it, and, you know, I don't like people that gossip. Uh, uh, I've been gross. around it where, like, there's th – the worst was when you would see comics shitting on other comics' act. Right. Mm. Uh, but then they go up. And you're like, all right, if you're going to talk that much shit, <laughs> yeah, better you better be murder. fucking Carlin. You better yeah, right. be Pryor. And it's just average stuff. Oh, right, right. And you're like, God, <laughs> man. I hate when people like, that's the only conversation you can have. Like you'd be in the car going on a, on a gig or a road trip or you're in the green room. Right. And you guys don't talk about it. All they want to do is bring up names and shit. And I am like, dog. And don't think, I remember someone telling me too, don't think just because they're not talking about you right now, they're not oh, going to yeah. talk about yeah, you when you walk that's, out of the I room. Think I, that's, that's what I said. You know, yeah. when I people, just, yeah. people will t assume that they're going to do that when you're not there. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I heard there was a guy calling other cities that he's not at, a show uh -huh. he wasn't, just to see how another comedian did. Yeah, yeah. fucking and right. Like, and it's not, it's not like, did he do good? I want to hype him up. It's, let me know if he did bad. Let me know if he did bad. Yeah. Right? It's like, to put that much effort into somebody else's act, yeah. it's like, that's like, man, yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. I need those kind of haters. Those are advocates. But like, you, I, I don't think you make it without those haters. Well, let me ask you guys this, though, man, because uh, we all, uh, again, I, I don't know about you so much. We talked about it. I know you're a street dude. Are, are you a street dude? Uh, no. <laughs> Not I mean, really? I mean, I, I've been around people. Because there, there's like a code. Oh yeah, I know that, the you know what I mean. Yeah. That yeah. the way the way you grow up, that like you That's just the way you behave. It's not like if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Mm. It's, it's a bitch trait, dog. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, like you know, if it, it's just not the way. It's ho shit. Yeah, like you yeah, know, you move a certain way because it has repercussions. It, it, it's it's yeah. just not it, it's not a good badge to have if they know you know that you're shit talking all the time. It's it just to me, it maybe it's a generational you. thing. It, it, I, I mean, I know you're the same way. It's why I can hang with you. Yeah, it's not, um, I don't think it's generational. I just think it's a, it's a standard for um, what a respectable man. It was weird when I got into comedy, dog. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, there was like, you guys don't know fucking morals? You got no ethics? Like, the way It's hard to navigate this oh, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen some shit in Austin. I was like, you guys do this in LA, you're getting knocked out. There's yeah. no conversation. <laughs> but it's just like, like even trying to like talk back to a host on his own mic, talking, like, if you want to yeah. do that, do that. Off. If you do that on a live show in mm -hmm. LA, even Houston, it's over. Well, mm -hmm. I think that's why the Cat Williams interview was so poignant, because he's not the type of dude who goes around and does gossip and rumors and gives up secrets and everything, but he's been collecting them for years. <laughs> <laughs> so the it was just archives. like... And, and he's successful. Yes. It's not like, you know... I mean, again, I, I, I haven't heard any of it. I just... I, I know no. that there's certain guys that were in the crossfire that I know that I, I think are great guys. And... I, and I love, I mean, Kat's a good dude, man. Yeah. He's a generous guy. Yes. I did numerous shows. I used to do his, uh, at the Compton Casino, I used to do his show there. I worked with him. Compton got a casino? Yeah. I would love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Kat, Kat used to have a, have a room there. And then um, when I worked at, uh, I used to work G-Max rooms all the time at the Hollywood Park Casino. And and Kat would host sometimes. And, you know, he's always been mm. Yeah, a, you know, an, I heard an, he always on the up and yeah. up. Yeah, he's a very generous guy. That's what I've and I, you know, when I was working out. with the kids, yeah. uh, he came and spoke to my kids wow. with Maj Jabrani. Um, but again, I, I haven't watched the interview. You know me, man. I don't do any of that. <laughs> no. I'm just totally just watching sports all the time. <laughs> it's good for a car ride when you on a road trip. Pop the podcast man. on, mm -hmm. and it Cat was Williams the won. best comedic yeah. interview I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it is very very good. It's very entertaining. Uh, Shannon Sharp is not asking the best questions, but he lets him just go. go. Yeah. And they're That's drinking like a bottle of booze like this big. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess what really started it was uh, 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 Cedric the Entertainer and Ricky Smiley both had interviews on and the Shannon Harvey. Sharp and Steve Harvey. Yeah, so a and bunch of people And they done said it some things that he thought was untrue. So he came to on set the, the show to set, set the record energy. straight. <laughs> And he... Well, see, well, here's the other thing, too, is that, um, you know, <laughs> it's so good. I, so good. I ran in some of those circles, but those guys were already blown right. up mm -hmm. when I started. But in the early 99, 2000, you know, like I, I know Kevin Hart's a great guy. Yeah. And, you know, um, I don't that, you know, that's all prior to me. Right. So but it don't that type of stuff don't interest me like that. No, man. and the beef stuff wasn't the 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 most interesting stuff is really them calling out joke thieves and that's yeah. like always important to me um, oh yeah the he, integrity of what we do you know so I, you know in this interview he's he mentions a joke that cedric the entertainers took from him and it took 
all of 15 seconds for the internet to find it and mm. you can a and b and you're like Ugh. yeah and steve harvey and steve harvey dude that uh the dev jam 25 when that when when curry is uh is confronting steve harvey in the back right. it's fucking the best hey, uh, Cur- mark curry is a fucking cool ass dude too like he's I've, a great I've, guy. I've gotten I to work mark with curry. Curry. yeah he's uh, man he's cool ass dude yeah. so it was like star general <laughs> uh, it's funny, curry's uh, a great guy yeah. yeah somebody sent me something that like cedric you know uh like these people do these showcases from like snl or something so then they, uh Cedric Entertainer was doing send me your best clip and win a thousand dollars. Oh yeah! And somebody tried was like you trying to submit and I was like uh, I'm, I don't know. Mm. And then this interview came out and I was like Nah. nah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Is that, is he collecting material? Yeah. Is that what's going Far, on? Far, Rachel Far Wilson work. made a, uh, <laughs> like a whole article in the news based off of that. Like a lot of people are like you know it's like yeah. send me your best clip a thousand dollars. Nobody wants like, to why? send. Why is he doing this? <laughs> Nobody man. wants to send Seti no jokes right mm-hmm. now. <laughs> but you know also too. You, uh, not just I don't know about the cat interview, but I just know in our community a lot of times people will accuse somebody of taking something when it's like, dude, right. it's like I, I've seen where it's it's documented, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then somebody's doing a similar joke, and then they're accusing somebody of taking a joke that they did 15 years ago, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. You see that all the time, especially but, in the newer age comics. But their character always defends itself. That that's one of my favorite yeah. quotes. The truth is like a lion just let it free. Right. And it'll defend itself, you know. The Dang. the the original black back blowback may be harsh, but then it just it, it'll clear itself out. You, you think know? Cedric's will clear itself out? I don't I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. if, if you <laughs> know, I don't I could I, I'll be honest with you, man. Um I couldn't tell you one Cedric joke. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And it's not that I'm not a fan of his right. of his comedy. I'm not a fan of stand up. But I mean, I'm, I like. Uh, I don't watch that shit at all. <laughs> I watch mm-hmm. so much stand up, and Cedric is hilarious. He's amazing, uh, and I do know a couple of his bits. However, man, the specific bit that he's talking about, when you look at the footage and you A and B him, you're like, damn. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 thing. it's a car it's one of to those, a spaceship, and that's the it's only like, difference. It's like it's not like a, a verbatim joke. It's an act out, mm-hmm. but the act out is almost verbatim. Yeah, you it's know what I liked bad. about the interview? Though? I like because I'm I'm big into stand up science. I love stand up science. Me like too. you know, it's just I, and when he starts talking about you know uh, the joke and how he's like, yeah, he's, it's one of those jokes that takes three minutes to set up, but then after that you could just keep hitting on right. it. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I get excited about that. And then he was like talking about. Um, you know, even comedy where it's at now, and he was like, well, I don't think that people have enough time to develop, which I right. think is a big, big difference between mm. the comics that we like and the comics we work with right now. Right. Because, you know, it's like we said, it's 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 the commodity is it, everyone let's be seen, let's be seen right. right now. But, you know, you're taking the cookies out of the oven before they're ready. They're exactly. not going to be as good you as they That's why one. sometimes not popping right away mm-hmm. is is in your best interest. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, obscurity. like yeah. you're forced to marinate in that motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What he's basically saying is like people putting their jokes on the Internet before they're finished. Well, that's again, though, that's. Half big. That's uh, that's that's an uh, you know. It sucks that's the day in the age That's a right thing now. that's that's right. going on now, especially with like three, four year comics. Um, right. Uh, and that's why people say that people steal jokes that I don't because well, they're like they're like oh I saw, I, that, I came up with that joke. It's like I put it up on this thing and it's like not even good and it's like dog. <laughs> that, yeah, you may have. T- it's a premise, but right. you didn't even elaborate on it. You're not. You're yeah. t- like I already. This is this is seven minutes. You're talking about a two a two sentence pun- setup and punch. That's you didn't. Yeah. I just still <laughs> none. You just didn't develop something. Exactly. Dude, I, I, yeah. go, I'm sorry. No, go no, 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 no. I work with this kid in Raleigh this week. His name was Caleb Elliott, and he, young kid used to tour with uh, Simbat. Mm. And this kid went up. He's 26, I think, or 27. I hate him already. <laughs> no, I'm just Yo, yeah. this kid was great. Yeah. And, and you could tell because he worked with somebody like Sinbad. I mean, right. he, he worked fairly clean. I mean, I would say mm-hmm. 99.9%. He may not have had one or two curse words. Right. But you could tell he's developed an act. Right. Mm-hmm. And then when he went in the crowd, it made more sense. And what I, me and him talk yeah. about all the time is how a lot of the younger comics are fishing for these damn... TikTok clips and yeah. and they're doing crowd work that is just it's trash. Right. And they're fishing. And you know, the people that are doing well, like Nate Jackson, Ian Bags oh, blowing up, yeah. Rick Ingram. Nate Jackson um is there's uh, yeah, great. uh Butch Bradley's great at yeah. crowd work. Oh, yeah. Steve yeah. Burns great at it. Oh yeah. Um Jimmy Brogan was like one of the guys that developed his whole act. He used to write for Leno, older comic. He's fucking brilliant. 
that was their act right. for ye- like 20 years yeah. of, of constructing. <laughs> Cash Levy's good at that, too. Patrice yeah. O'Neill was the goat at many, that. Yeah. Many. <laughs> Ca- Cash, he's great. Yeah, Cash Levy. I mean, great. there's so yeah. many that yeah. have, but that was what they did. And now you're seeing these younger comics that are more concerned with getting a soundbite and, right. and blowing up. A viral up. moment instead of a good, like, act. But that's detrimental yeah. to them. Right. They don't realize it. So when you're an older comic, it, it's not. See, that's the other thing, too. The confusion between bitterness and just trying to pass down some yeah, knowledge. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And the old right. head type of person, like perspective? Yeah, well, I mean, look, it, it also it, it helps where it's coming from, right? So, right. like, if there's an older comic that I respect that may not be big, and he, and he may not be a household name, but comics know, especially my, how, how good this motherfucker is, we're taking his word. Right. A younger dude might be like, nobody know, you know. Right, mm-hmm. right. That, you know, which is that's part of being a young you man. Got? Yeah, that's part <laughs> of being a young man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Where there are some comics that, you know, come from a bitter place. But I think the more successful you are or the success you have adds validity to the advice. Right. If that makes sense. You know what yeah, I mean? Because I mean, because a lot of people say don't take advice from somebody who's not where you want to be. Mm. So. I always say shit, don't take advice from any other comedian because, like, <laughs> dude, it's not going to, like, my funny isn't how your funny is. Right. You know, my funny right. and how your funny right. is. Like, my, I'm my own person. Like, you got to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I can only tell you how to how I can be a better comedian, not how you can be a better but comedian. But that's why I love the Ralphie May, uh, like, master class that he did at the store. Right. Because mm-hmm. he doesn't talk about comedy at all. You mm-hmm. can't. He talks about the things outside of comedy that'll fuck up your comedy career. The stand-up right. science. And that, yeah. and that is like <laughs> yeah. the science All of it. it yeah. And I think that's great. Mm-hmm. But when you're trying to tell somebody to be funny, it's like, well, you're funny nah. your way, like you said. Yeah. But the Ralphie Mae one is like, no, this applies to any comedian anywhere ever. Yeah. And I didn't see that, though. But no, that's, no, yeah. He does no, there, there's that's things great. that are... I agree with that. He, like I, I did a couple of those. Like don't hook up with the bartender. Yeah. Like, the, like all these things that like. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. it's, it's yeah. true. No, it's true. But, but take but care of the staff. A, yeah, yeah. Um, you Can't know. you call it all the time because <laughs> yeah. you never know who that door person is going to be. The booker hey. in about five years. Or the booker asks the bartender, "Hey, we have open weekend. Who should we be?" You yeah. didn't call her back, Boom. so she doesn't say your name. So anything like all these. Well, things. I mean, there there's comedy club etiquette. Yep. And I like Boom. that term you just said, comedy comedy science. Yeah, stand up yes. science. Stand up science. Yeah. But there's not a you can't tell somebody how to be funny or tell them no. you know because they they voices. have their goal yeah. and their their sense of humor mm. but what you can do is hip them to the process right yes. like it would be like you know if i'm at the gym and you're trying to get in shape there's a process to getting in shape yeah. and there's right. certain steps you can't cook you can't cut like first of all you can't be eating like a fucking savage <laughs> right. like <laughs> a- abs are made in the kitchen mm-hmm. yeah. right yeah. And, yeah. you know Perfect. it's the same thing with funny funny is made in uh how many times you get up right the the freak you know the frequency of what you're doing and then you know then there's also guys that get up with no purpose yes i'm just gonna go up there and, and try and figure it out they think it's just about the material but the way i am is if i like somebody if i'm indifferent to somebody i'm not really gonna come in if i like somebody i'll i'll tell them what what i think could help them not right. Not about their joke, right? Or you know, but more of uh, of the the process. And if they don't want to take it, then they don't take it. I'm not going to repeat myself right. or waste my time. Do you, you get know? offended from that? Not at all. No. Not, well, I'll ask somebody. I'll be like, "Is it okay if I tell you something?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but that that's crazy because you could give advice to ninety percent of people, <laughs> and and it's crazy that people get offended. It's like, no, yeah. take it. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, but, once you get yeah. to a certain point, too, it's even the guys that are already up there. Yeah, you know, I, I, we take advice from each other because you know I, I used to say it's it's that crossword puzzle, Mis- like you ever see somebody staring at a puzzle they don't see the answer then yeah. somebody just comes over their shoulder and they're like oh there it is yeah because yeah. they're staring at it yeah. too long yeah. you're in too deep so sometimes you know and there's certain people that I, I'm friends with that don't want the tags right and they'll be like nah I don't want to interfere with it mm. interfere with it and that's fine too mm. but you know I'm I'm open to that shit. I got no ego with it. I'm like, what do you see? Because I'm fucking like, well, you I know have, there's more here. Well, you, <laughs> yeah, like, basically, too. when I came up with Bitch Ass Kevin, he, it was both of us. Because we were yeah. doing this Bitch Ass Dad shit in San Diego. In, what was it? San, uh, San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah. And, you know, and we were bouncing back and forth. I had good ones. He had yeah. some great ones. And then to morph that into the other thing, I mean, you right. know, we. Because it was a ton of them in San Francisco. Dude. I was like, dude, yeah, we, were, I we were dying. I love tags. I love advice. I love tags. I bought the Twitter. I, I have the Twitter handle. You yeah. have the hard ass mom one, though. Right? I got the hard ass one and I got another bitch ass dad one because I was like, it was like bitch ass, your bitch ass dad and then the you are bitch ass dad. But uh, 
Yeah, no, I do. I do too. Like even, even like like the way the tables are set up in a room. Dude, you know? the science yes. of it is great. Ali Sadi gave me a science. That he's like, when you're a headliner, he's like, when they drop checks, don't do a long bit. Like mm -hmm. he's not influencing your joke or anything, mm -mm. but it's the science. It's he's science. like, everybody's looking at the thing. They're putting their glasses on. They turn Adding the light shit on, up. and it's just well, like. Well, I'll tell you something that happened in Raleigh. So I did an hour and forty-two minutes. Damn. Okay, now Fuck. that's not. Mm -hmm. what the story is about. <laughs> the story it. is about in the front, in the first row of balcony. So this is a huge room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we were pretty packed. There was a beef going on, okay? Oh, so it started with the guy and his girl, and then the guy behind him told him to keep it down, and there was a whole thing going on. So the staff was going over there. So now you, you don't want to end the show. Right. Because if you end the show, and I've seen this, dudes stand up and they <laughs> just start throwing hands. And the poor security, you don't want to put pressure on them. You don't want to address it because it could piss them off. So now I had to move everybody's eyesight over here. I'm digging into fucking crates, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, trying to segue with stuff. And, you know, that is that's a, a just from 26 years yeah. of experience. It was right. funny because uh, same thing happened at Boston Comedy Club. Did you crowd? Sorry, one second. Did you crowd work it on the other side of the room to try? To, like, no, no, no. Move the I, 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 I was walking this way. It was it was a, a, a position where they could get him out. And finally, it escalated where the guy goes, fuck you. And then they stood up. And then then he ran out, which made it easier for everybody. And then uh. once they left, I was like. All right, let me tell you guys what I was doing here. <laughs> because, yeah. But by the way, it, I'm doing my act, but I'm watching that going, oh, I want to uh, see how this plays out. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I do the same thing because like uh, I was, but I, I I do what you're talking about. Like I have the crowd over here and I'm like, I'm like, hey, we know what's going down over there on that side. And this is like, you know, when couples argue in a, in a restaurant, you want to yeah. know. So everyone, let's pretend like we're not seeing it, but we're listening to it. Right. And they all were laughing and we're just, and then when they kept I didn't even draw attention to it. Yeah, I did. See, I was I like, fuck it. I want to like know. a couple months ago that we had some, some, some hecklers or some rowdy couple over in uh like in the booths vip section at the strat wait was and that the show i went to that I don't know. crazy chick that was i, I like, don't remember if that was it was i think it might have been that show yeah <laughs> i think it might have been that show see you after and so, she's from new jersey right and... he just plays to the other side of the room you know until the, everybody's attention i was like oh that was really well, slick. a lot of mistake comics make is they just stand there and you and know, like, uh -oh. and there's there's a psychology in stand up as well. Right. You know what were we gonna say about Lap Boston? Because I had one where somebody fell and cracked their head open in the back. Damn. Oh, in the back. And the paramedics were coming in and they were working on them. But, <laughs> but most of the crowd. <laughs> this was like five years ago, I think, six years ago, because it was before Sam J got uh, Saturday Night Live. Okay. Because she was hanging out. Okay. And and the, all this shit was going on in the back. They were coming in. <laughs> yeah. Paramet and the whole audience didn't know. And I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> you know? You can see it. Yeah, because it's uh, like if you're on the stage, the stage yeah, right. Was, yeah, right here. Yeah, well, where, like, this was going on in the or, far or like back left, right. But, oh, okay, okay. Because that's where the doors are. Wow. Mm -hmm. And all that shit was going on, and, and the audience has no idea. <laughs> you didn't acknowledge yeah, it at all. Yeah, nah, and I, I, I thought they were going to break out the fucking cuckoo yeah. thing. But, <laughs> but the lady got Rip. drunk and split her head open, and, Jesus. you know, she was out. So they, it was just... It was, uh, that just happened at Wise Guys last week at the oh, open mic. Oh, yeah. shit. Some dude was just like... And just hit back, and they, they, they defibrillated. They, like, cutting people's time at the open mic. I was like, don't stop the mic! <laughs> <laughs> like, that You're like, I still got to work this five minutes out, goddamn it. Three minutes. They give you three minutes. Oh, like, three, oh, shit. I, I got to work... This joke out. That's a yeah. good resume. Somebody cracked their head open to my joke. Yeah, I'm, I'm killing out here. I'm killing. I'm, I'm cracking it. Bro, I've 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 seen that a bunch of times, man. I bet it was a. It was it was you know what's funny because it was a St. Patty's Day weekend in Boston, so I, we knew it was going to oh, be God. prop. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Who were you with? Uh, it was uh, um, Jay Hollinsworth and uh, who else was? Oh with God. Me? Yeah, it was Jay. It was Big Jay Hollinsworth. Was Maddie Fontana there? Uh, 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 no, Matty didn't come. No, no, he wasn't out there. Because he um, does a show there every, every Oh, year. who the fuck was out there? Because uh, it's oh, last wow. Boston, right? It's not, not. That's okay. the one in Southie. That's the one near. Yeah. <laughs> I, went to a, I went to an AA meeting in Southie because I was like, I got to go. I got to go to an AA meeting in For Southie. For the material? Dude, just because I'm, I'm, I'm sober, so I went out oh. there. And um, uh, all, all Irish guys? <laughs> dude, it was so great. It was exactly what I wanted, too. I went to this church, <laughs> and they were like, you want to go down? To, there was a door, right? And they were like, go down there. And so I went down there, and there's it's it's... It's basement and it's halved off by a by a sheet and uh, <laughs> on the other side of the sheet is the food locker and it's just like where the fuck are my chips? Where the fuck are my? <laughs> it was fucking wild. I was like, I fucking love it. That's the best, dude. I always tell uh, anybody on the West Coast, just take a trip to the East Coast. Yeah, right. go, go to like Boston, Philly. 
and just see the the amount of scales. <laughs> the, the, the low rent. <laughs> it's great. I love the amount of like, degenerates. I'll tell you what I love. Ghosts. I love Baltimore, man. And mm. you know, a mm-hmm. lot of I, I heard a lot of comics like, dude, that place is I fucking love that place. <laughs> Cause you know, you're just like, if you can't get any scummier than Philly, go to Baltimore. <laughs> and, and that, but you know, I love trash. I love all that yeah. shit, man. What's what's the place in Boston where it's uh, in, in an Italian restaurant and it's downstairs and it's it's dope. Oh man, Will Noonan uh, runs it. It's uh the one in Providence? No, it's it's in Boston and it's under it's it's uh Fuck, I can't. I know we got to wrap this up, okay, shit, but shit, we, shit. we were doing, there is not a better pedigree of stand-up comedians of a city than Boston. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, dude. What? It, Bill Burr, Patrice O'Neill, Patrice, uh, Rogan, Dane Cook. They go um, hard. Louis C.K. Yeah. Um, dude, we were, you can go with Jay Leno. Yeah. Um, uh, Dennis Leary. Um, and you got to count Providence, too, because that's the area, right? Because yeah. it's not like Sarah yeah. Silverman's Caps. from there. Oh, was it Caps? I think it's called Caps. Yeah, damn. Yeah, Boston's Boston. got legends, bro. It's yeah. it's sick. Mm. It's it's like it would Kevin be... Hart. Is that a Boston too? Right? He's... No, no, he's Philly. 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 That's right. That's right. He's Philly. But yeah. like you know, and look, and we all move to L.A. or New York to right. to you know be more in in the business and you know stuff right. like that. But the origins of that, Stephen Wright, Bobcat oh, yeah, Goldthwait. Yeah, yeah. right. That damn. whole documentary was about those cats. Yeah, huh? when stand up stood out. Yeah, dude, Boston is a sick. Lenny Clark. Uh, Lenny Clark. Lenny is, fucking Clark. He's a uh, dude. There's so fucking is Fitz many. From Boston. F- Fitz is from Fitzy? yeah. Him and Rogan used to run with each other back in the day. Yeah, Damn. Fitzy's from is there too. Is it still as good of a scene as it was back in the day? Um, you know, I it's weird too because of the internet and the way things are now. I mean, you know, again, I I used to love when I go into cities. I mean, it's how I met him. And mm. you know, you go to these different cities, and then they're the guys that are like working in those right. cities, mm. and then they have a scene. Like San Francisco used to be dope. Yeah, Seattle was dope. Yeah, Seattle was really good. And then dope, it, yeah. you know it kind of fell off a little because you know it just didn't get as hard in the paint. But Boston is yeah. When you look, oh Bobby Kelly's another one. Gary Goldman. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah. Dude, Jim Norton. Or? No, Norton's no, New York. He's Norton. Jersey. Jersey, okay. yeah, Jersey with the with uh, what's his name? Uh, fuck, I, I, he's felt fucking funny to Damn. me. Damn. He, he, he used to do crank kick. He used to be special ed. Jim Florentine? Jim Florentine. Yeah, I Jim's fucking love guy. Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, but no, again, I always say, and if if there's an older comic and, and he's willing to to give you advice on what you call the stand-up science. Stand-up yeah. science, yeah. Yeah, like if, if somebody comes up to you and go, don't do that, Joe, unless, of course, there's you may not know it, but there's like a famous bit that's right, that you're right. doing. It's like, why even waste your time? Right. Yeah. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, because that, that happens a lot, too. I just had a, a a sit down. Well, I was sit down. It was a phone call with Willie Barcena. I did a, I did the dirty at twelve thirty. I featured for him, and mm. he's he's like, call me tomorrow, bro, because <laughs> that bit. I'm gonna tell you why that's your best and worst bit you've ever written. <laughs> <laughs> and I call him up, and I'm like, here we go, man. I love this because I look up to Willie. You know what I mean? He's killing it, man. He's, uh, you know, as I aspire. I think to he be had that. like the most Tonight Show appearance. Dude, yeah. he's, yeah. he's yeah. It's a phenomenal he's writer. He's a definite vet, man. He's, he's one a, of the best writers yeah. in comedy, Super nice. period. Yeah. So when he, when Willie Barcena tells you this is your worst and best yeah. bit, yeah. you know, I had to make this phone call. And, uh, you know, long story short, he was like, you know, you use an amazing framework of how to write jokes. You can use that to tackle larger topics instead of low-hanging fruit like mm-hmm. shitting. <laughs> no, it's like, yeah. oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I'm going to talk about racism now. <laughs> hey, bro, but, but hey, bro, the, you know, bro? He hey, gives bro. you the science. Yeah. He's not telling me how to write a joke no. or even the joke was bad, but like using the framework to do bigger and take yeah. on bigger it's like a le- it's a tear it's exactly. a tear and joke it's a it's a difficulty it could be a dick joke but just depends on the difficulty of the dick joke exactly. and that's what makes it a good dick joke i'm not telling you how to write it right. i'm just telling you like hey man if you, that's real easy Right. Go think think three more steps in, and that'll be a good joke. That'd be a better joke. And the easy one is the one that somebody else probably has. Yeah, anybody yeah, water cooler shit. You go, oh, somebody already has that. Well, again, exactly. man. First of all, as again, as comics, and uh, how many years in are you now? I'm probably like what 2008 is when I came back. I would say about 17 now, almost. What are you? Three, like two and a half, three. 14. 14. Okay, so you ever watch a comic on stage and be like, "Yo, this kid's good." This kid's original. Yeah. This kid. And then that's when you feel compelled to go, hey, man. Right. You know, maybe don't do this so much. And this this would make this easier. 
Right. You know, like make your setup indifferent uh, uh, unless you don't want it to be. And so this way the payoff, you know, you, that's the science right. of mm-hmm. it. Right. And a lot of times, you know, you, you watch younger guys because, look, I'll say this. I, I'm not a fan of watching stand-up. <laughs> I, I love the art form. Yeah. And I right. definitely love the community. And, right. You know, and it's just you want to see it keep going because it, it, it can it can die. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean rock genres of music have basically been have disappeared and you know one of the things is none of us are bigger than comedy. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Even the biggest comic nobody's bigger than comedy and comedy is like baseball, you know. Right. It's like it, it, it's you're not bigger than baseball. <laughs> We're not bigger than comedy. So it's right. it's important to also nurture the art form and that's why when you know people don't like your jokes don't take it personal. Exactly. One of, one of my favorite quotes is it's none of my business what you think about me yeah. and it's not i don't give a shit yeah man I, and you know when you get involved in that type of stuff right like you know uh what's the say you can't soar with the eagles if you're pecking with crows right you know what i mean i got a calendar at home <laughs> A, st- uh, I got a, a, a Rolling Stone don't gather no moss, motherfucker. And, uh, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, two it in the hand is worth one in the bush. <laughs> All right, anyways, listen, uh, I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, this yeah. was fun for me. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, are you guys going to be anywhere? Uh, yeah. What are you here right. again? Are you What are you hosting? Uh, YouTube. Event. You're doing that, that event again? Yeah. Right on. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I'm back in town. I'm in Vegas. I just got back touring Texas and did all the clubs up there and hung out with my boy X over here in Austin. That was fly. But uh, I'll be in in Vegas all January, February. I'm back in Oregon. I'll be touring. I got the Black Pacific Northwest Comedy Festival. I'll be doing, nice. and then the There's Coachella like Valley there, right? Festival. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there, is there, is there? But only eight of us perform. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there was a comic at it. Do you know Troy Thurgill? No. Oh, dude, he was great. Um, where are you at? Uh, I will be this week. I'm headlining the Laughlin uh, Comedy Club at River's Edge um, in the, the casino. And then February the 14th through the, I want to say, what, the 17th and 18th, I'll be at San Francisco Punchline. And then a yes. the weekend after that, I'll be at the Sacramento Punchline. Well, we just take it one week Boom. at a time. There we go. <laughs> well, we don't know if we're fucking going to be. We're no, we'll, for two we'll, weeks. Be, we'll be back. Okay. <laughs> when do you drop this? Say what? When are you uh, dropping this? This week. Yeah. Okay. This, yeah. Uh, I'll be uh, in Austin and San Antonio for Don't Tell the 19th, so that'll be a fun one. And then Fort Worth and Dallas, 20th and 21st. Right yeah. on. Hyenas. I'll be back in Texas in, in March. I'll come fuck with you. All right. Yeah. Come All right. So me. this weekend, I'm in Wisconsin, actually, uh, <laughs> at the Comedy Cabin. It's kind of a new new room. It's pretty dope. It's right outside of Wisconsin, uh, out of Madison. So it's in Janesville, Wisconsin. So just go to Brett Comedy, Brett with one T. Well, you guys know already. So I mean that's it. And uh yo, appreciate you guys coming. Thanks for having me. And Thank uh, you for yeah, having us. Uh make sure you call your moms. God bless. God.